Let's look at some free body diagrams. A free body diagram represents all the forces acting on an object. So in this case, we have a box sitting on the floor. I'll draw a box to represent the box. The box is on the earth, so there's a gravitational force on the box. And the box is sitting on a surface, so there's a normal force up. There's nothing pushing the box left or right. So for this case, my free body diagram is complete. In this case, we have a hockey puck sitting on ice. The hockey puck is moving at a constant speed to the right. So the free body diagram of all the forces acting on it would be a gravitational force down due to the earth pulling on it and a normal force up due to the ice surface. Now since the hockey puck is moving at a constant speed, it is not being accelerated at all there is no net force in the horizontal direction. There is nothing pushing or pulling on the hockey puck as it slides across this nearly frictionless, so our coefficient of friction is equal to zero, ice. In this case, we have a bird feeder hanging from a string, and there's the bird feeder, and it's at rest. So the free body diagram of the bird feeder would be the weight of the bird feeder and because it's hanging from a cord we'll call that a tension force so tension is the force along a cord or a chain or even you could call tension the force in an arm that's pulling on something now in this case we have a boat at rest on water so the force diagram or the free body diagram would be the earth definitely pulls down on the boat and the water definitely pushes up on the boat. You could call this a normal force if you consider the water as having a surface. You could also call it maybe force float if you wanted to because there is a floating force or you might even call it the buoyant force if you wanted to. In this case we have an elevator that is being raised by this crank motor system up here at a constant speed upwards. So the forces acting on the elevator would be the earth pulling on the elevator straight down and the cable holding it up causing a tension force. When a meteor enters the Earth's atmosphere, it begins to burn up. So here is a meteor that's entering the Earth's atmosphere, and it's falling. So the forces acting on it would be the Earth definitely pulling down on this meteor. And the air, which is causing it to burn up, all the, the friction in the air, which we call the drag force, which is how we describe the air resistance or the friction due to air particles rubbing or bumping into the object. Now, as this meteor enters the Earth's atmosphere, it is speeding up. The gravitational force is greater than the drag force. But as it continues to move into the Earth's atmosphere, eventually it will reach equilibrium and the gravitational force will equal the drag force.